All right, it's been a long damn week already. First of all, all right, now I'm hydrated. So I was realizing today, and I've always realized this, but I'm really appreciating it. I am lucky enough that each and every day I get to be around three of the most successful people to ever grace media, essentially, right? Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God, and DJ Envy, The Breakfast Club. And every day, millions of people watch their content, they read their books, listen to their podcasts, etc., just to pick up some sort of game. And I get to be next to them every single day and actually ask questions and learn from them personally. So I thought it was only right if I give you some of the gems that I've learned from my four years working at The Breakfast Club. So here are my top five things that I've learned, my top five takeaways that I'm gonna be bringing with me for the rest of my life that I learned from working at The Breakfast Club. Cue the vlog. <laughs> My name is Dramos, and I'm probably best known as the dude that sits next to DJ Envy on The Breakfast Club. And while that's been a, a dream come true, if we're being real, I'm also so much more than just that. I'm a DJ, a music producer, a TV personality, a radio and podcast host. But more importantly, I'm just a man taking life day by day, trying to make the best of it, while hopefully making this world a better place. And who knows, maybe my story will inspire some of y'all to do the same. Exciting times in the life of being a homeowner. This fence is still in the process of being put together, but this fence just got put up this week. I finally got to worry about my neighbors watching me do whatever I'm doing in the backyard. Not like I'm really doing much. Also, I finally don't have to come out here and like be caught off guard and scream like a little girl when a bunch of deer scare the hell out of me in the middle of the night in my backyard. So deer ain't coming back here no more, which I like. Little by little, man, we're progressing. Also, this week, update in my life. I am currently dog sitting for my parents. Sasha, you wanna say hi? So my parents are in Puerto Rico. Uh, so yeah, I'm dog sitting for them. I don't think she really likes me that much, but here we are. Anyway, on to today's topic. So five things I learned from working at the Breakfast Club. Number one, one of the biggest lessons I've learned early on from the Breakfast Club, both they've said it to me straight up and also just a fan and observer. And this is the lesson that it's easier to ask for forgiveness as opposed to permission. And let's just kind of break that down, what it means in terms of the Breakfast Club. I mean, part of the reason why the Breakfast Club is so successful is because they break so many of the norms that people would expect or did expect from a radio show. They didn't wait for somebody to give them permission to do something. When they had a creative idea, they went for it. Sometimes they got into trouble, but it's also what made them them. It's also what got them these crazy moments that we've all seen that will live on forever. It's because they didn't wait for somebody to say, hey, it's okay for you to do this. They got an idea and they went for it. Now, of course, you have to apply this within reason, but the main point of it all is oftentimes we allow ourselves to be discouraged by other people's responses or interpretations to our ideas, right? Most of the time people aren't going to be able to hear your ideas or see them in the way that you're envisioning it in your head. Sometimes the only way they get it, the only way they understand it is seeing it out there in action. So sometimes you got to take that risk and go against what the norm is, go against what you're being told to do and put an idea that you believe in out there for the world. The reward of what could come from potentially having a great idea far exceeds the slap on the wrist you might get for breaking the rules every once in a while. Now, number two on this list is something that still bothers me till this day, and it's a lesson that I had to learn the hard way. And that lesson is, there is no tomorrow. And the moment that, that taught me is I had to learn it the hard way. This was literally in my first few months of working at the Breakfast Club. I wasn't actually even in the same studio as them at the time. I was in the studio next to them. And if you know me at all, Nipsey also has to be one of my biggest inspirations in this life. I mean, outside of music, just him as a man, uh, him as a thought leader, as a person, I find myself constantly always just watching Nipsey content whenever I'm lost, whenever I'm 
looking for guidance or I'm a little bit down, I usually throw on like a playlist on YouTube of some different Nipsey interviews and it usually helps, you know, me spark a creative idea or helps me bounce out of whatever kind of funk that I'm in at the moment. So first couple weeks at the Breakfast Club, Nipsey is a guest. And at that time I was brand new, so I was scared. I didn't know what the protocols were. But as he's getting ready to leave, you know, he takes a picture with the with the crew and other people are taking pictures and just saying what's up to him and things like that. I wanted to go out there and just, corny as this sounds, I just wanted to give him his flowers and, and let him know just how important the content he was making and, and his overall just messages, how important they were to me. And rather than go ahead and, and do that, I told myself, well, he'll be back. I'll, I'll do it next time. And, and lo and behold, as you can guess, I'm sure at this point, there was no next time. A few months later, Nipsey was, was killed. And as dumb as it may seem when we're talking about the world of, of celebrity and all these different things, it still bothers me that I missed out on the opportunity to potentially have a conversation with one of my heroes. So the moral of that story is, man, when you have an opportunity to do something that you want to do, make sure you take advantage of it because tomorrow it may never come. All right, number three. Successful people ain't that much different from you and I. Now, I'm blessed to be around, like I started this video saying, three incredibly successful people. I'm also in the room when they're interviewing people who have done great things. But just like all of us, they have things that they're insecure about, they get nervous, they have physical imperfections, and they have dumb moments. And this isn't to take away anything from them or that they've achieved. But when you start to get really close to them, it's really empowering because you realize you yourself are not that far off from achieving a similar level of greatness as long as you put in the work. The only exceptions though, two exceptions, Will Smith and 50 Cent. Those guys are aliens and none of us are as good at them at anything in this life. I'm just throwing it out there right now. They are the only two people on this planet that I've met thus far that when they walk in a room, you just feel it. It just hit different. I can't explain it any other way. Number four, Charlemagne says this all the time and it's literally one of the things that I consistently have been practicing over this last year. And that is, he always says, you get what you negotiate. And that's been huge for me because so many of us live in like this fear, right? I know for me, when I get an opportunity, especially when you work in like the creative field, it's easy for people to kind of be like, hey, well, can you do it for free? Or can you do it for this low price? Whatever the case may be. And depending on where you're at in your career, sometimes you gotta say yes to that, right? But what I also noticed was that even as I began to progress in my career, I still didn't have that confidence. I was still operating like that kid who was still just trying to get his foot in the door. So a lot of people were taking advantage of me when it comes to financial or business situations. And a lot of times I would chalk it up to people just being bad humans. And maybe there is some truth to that, but it's also business at the end of the day. And when you recognize that the people that are giving you offers don't actually have your best interest in mind, it means that you have to to begin to advocate for yourself. You have to stick up for yourself and get what you deem to be fair, or at least try to, and meet somewhere in the middle. And I can tell you from experience, this works because the first offer that comes through, that is their bottom line, generally speaking, right? And they plan on potentially having to go up in the negotiation process. See, before that, I would see their first offer and I would take it because I was nervous it was gonna go away and I was just so grateful somebody was giving me an offer. But now, I see that offer and I know, okay, that means there's room to go up from there and I try it. I've lost that fear to try it because of those words. You get what you negotiate. And the last thing, number five, possibly the most important thing that I have learned from The Breakfast Club is when you see your opening, you better take it. Do not hesitate. A lot of people who watch the show every day, listen to the show every day, you know that my role has begun to increase, right? I have a speaking role now on The Breakfast Club. I chime in on different topics, whatever the case may be. But that's all new. And the reality is I could have been doing that a lot sooner. I just didn't trust myself. I didn't take the openings when I saw them, when they were given to me. Because so many times throughout the course of me working there, they would do things to possibly set me up, to have a commentary, to say something, to interject my opinion, to have a comeback, whatever the case may be. And instead of taking advantage of it, I would kind of just laugh it off and let the moment pass by me. And what would happen on the drive home, I'd be kicking myself because I know I missed out on the opportunity. I allow my anxiety to overcome me as well as I just allow myself to overthink the moment. And then eventually it passed by me because I hesitated. So what I learned to do was in that moment where I feel that opening coming, do not hesitate. Do not listen to that little voice in your head that begins to second guess. If you feel like there's an opening, you have to take it. You have to at least try because that might be the big break you've been looking for. And with that said, 
Man, I want to thank all y'all for tuning in. Please like and subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to grow this to become a platform that I utilize for everybody. I know I've been beating this like a dead horse, but I look at the analytics and a lot of you guys watch the video but don't actually subscribe. And I get it. I kind of had done the same thing on YouTube for a long time until I started realizing that people that are creatives on YouTube, the algorithm looks at all this nonsense of like subscribing, commenting, you know, putting on the bell for notifications, all that different stuff, liking. And that's how they grow the channel. And I'm trying to use my channel for good. So please help me help you. Help me grow this channel so that I can give it back to you. We can help each other to make our dreams come true together collectively that's what i'm all about i want to give back so when i'm able to climb that ladder man my goal is to be able to toss it right back down for somebody else so please help me do that and with that said thank you again i appreciate y'all tuning into the vlog i'm sorry i was slacking this week i'm putting out two it's just been a crazy week i'm gearing up for my podcast right now so it's been taking up a lot of time i've also had people working on the house here like non-stop but i'm gonna try to pump out two more this next week and stay consistent as I'm also gearing up for the podcast that uh, it starts on July 20th. The first episode drops two a week. I'll be giving more info as it gets closer. But man, thank y'all. And I'll, uh, I'll catch you next time. Peace.